There are two main groups of licenses to share scientific work. One group is for presentations, papers, data, etc. and one group is for software. Quick disclaimer, licensing involves quite a bit of law jargon, which I'm not an expert of, but I will do my best to provide the correct information. Before starting with the guidelines, let's quickly clarify why we need a license. As scientists, we create intellectual property, which means products of our mind, papers, presentations, data, code, and so on. Intellectual property is automatically protected by copyright, which means that we, creators of the material, have the right to produce copies of our work, create derivatives, that is, modifications and extensions, distribute copies, etc. Now, if we want to share our work products with anybody else, we have to add a license. A license is what allows other scientists to use our material and us to define the conditions. If we do not provide the license, potential users do not know whether they can use our material and under what conditions. So, in simple words, even if we put code or data on GitHub, Zenodo or any other repository, this material cannot be used by anybody else if we do not add the license. Let's see how to choose a license, first for data and then for software. One of the most common licenses for papers, data, presentations, basically everything but software, are the Creative Commons licenses. The Creative Commons licenses are built upon four concepts, each of them represented by a symbol. Attribution, which means that anybody using our work has to explicitly mention our name. Non-commercial, which means that people using our work cannot make money with it. No derivatives, anybody using our work cannot modify it. And share alike, anybody using our work has to license their creation using the same license that we are using. From the combinations of these four symbols, we can assemble six different kinds of licenses that go from least to most freedom. As we can notice, in all these licenses, attribution is always present, but if we are not interested in being cited, we can use the license CC0, which means that our work is in the public domain and free of copyright restrictions. Now, to easily choose what license we want, we can go to creativecommons.org slash choose and answer these two simple questions. First, allow adaptations of your work to be shared. We can reply yes, no, and yes, as long as others share alike. And second question, allow commercial use of your work, and we can reply yes or no. As we could see, changing answers modifies the combination of symbols and thus the license we might want. Now, we can use the selected license based on our answers for a journal paper, editor repository, etc. If we need the image with the license symbols, we can copy this code here for an HTML document. If we want it in an image format, we can either save this image, but it is going to be low resolution, or we can go to About Downloads and download a higher resolution image. One last important thing about Creative Commons licenses is in this frequently asked question. Can I apply a Creative Commons license to software? The answer is, we recommend against using Creative Commons licenses for software. Unlike software-specific licenses, Creative Commons licenses do not contain specific terms about the distribution of source code. So, let's have a separate look at software licenses. Software licenses are a bit more complicated because of the large variability and the jargon. But bear with me through the end and I hope things will be clear. Software licenses can be subdivided in three categories. Proprietary, which are typical of commercial software, the ones we have to click on I agree when installing. Free and open source, which are very common among scientists and hybrid, which are in between the two previous groups. In this video, we will focus on free and open source licenses. There are several of them, but all free and open source licenses have three basic ideas in common. One, the source code has to be available to users. Two, users can reuse, modify and redistribute the code. And three, Free and open source does not mean non-commercial. In fact, software under these licenses can be used for commercial purposes. 
Free and open source licenses can be divided in two groups, permissive and copyleft. Permissive licenses are, for example, BSD, which stands for Berkeley Software Distribution, MIT, and Apache. They mainly require one thing, attribution. This means that those who use, modify, or extend our code have to explicitly reference to our work. But beyond that, they can release their software containing ours with whatever license they prefer, permissive, copyleft, or proprietary. For example, TidyR, an R package for data tidying, has an MIT license. This means that anybody who uses TidyR to create new code can release this new code with any permissive, copyleft, or proprietary license. Copyleft licenses are, for example, GNU General Public License, GNU Lesser GPL, Mozilla Public License. They require two things attribution to the original authors, like in case of permissive licenses, and in addition, that those who use, modify, or extend our code have to release their code with the same license we used, which guarantees permanent openness of original and derived code. So, for example, Tidyverse, a collection of R packages for data science, has a GNU GPL license. This means that anybody using, modifying, or extending Tidyverse will have to release their code with a GNU GPL license as well, to guarantee a cascade of open code. Now, how do we choose whether we want to use a permissive or a copyleft license for our scientific code? We can do that by replying to two questions. First, what is the aim of sharing our code? If we want our code to be used and shared as much as possible, then we choose a permissive license. Permissive licenses are considered developer-friendly because other developers can invest the time and money to improve and extend our code. However, they can release their new code as proprietary with proprietary license. Therefore, permissive licenses do not guarantee openness of future code versions. On the other side, if we want to guarantee that openness and freedom propagate indefinitely throughout the derived code, we choose a copyleft license. These licenses are considered user-friendly because users are free to use the software, modify and redistribute their changes. However, these licenses might limit a broader use of the source code because companies would be required to make their code open as well, which might not be their main interest. The second question we have to ask to choose our license is what are the licenses of the packages we are using? If we want to use a permissive license, we have to make sure that the packages or libraries we are using have permissive licenses as well. If one of them has a copyleft license, we cannot use that package because we cannot guarantee future openness with our permissive license. On the other side, if we want to use a copyleft license, we can use existing code that has either a permissive license or a copyleft license, because the copyleft license of our code will propagate the openness of the external source code we are using to future versions. So, in conclusion, when choosing a license, we have to keep into account the aim of our code sharing, backward compatibility of our license, and forward compatibility. Now that we have the tools to decide whether we want a permissive or a copyleft license, how do we choose the license itself? This depends on our own needs and our institutions. A good source of information is choosealicense.com. In the licenses page, we can go through details of each license in terms of permissions, conditions, and limitations. And in the page appendix, we can compare the specific characteristics of each license so that we can choose the best license for our code. And that's it. If you have any questions or comments, please write them below. Hope it's useful.